okay, so we've crowed the reed, and let me show you again how you do that. You put your lips loosely over the reed, down onto the thread, and just blow softly or hard, and you can kind of get a sense for whether it's going to make any sound. You can see the aperture is still just a little bit too open, and I'm going to try just squeezing it a little bit with my thumb and finger. See, now we're going to try to get this in perfect adjustment in the instrument. So let's put it in, put on the cap. This is the point where people need to be really careful putting the cap on and off so you don't break the reed. Now that plays pretty good. It sounds a little bit um, loud and it's a little bit hard to blow. And I can see by my box I'm about 20 cents sharp. Um, the reed is also a little bit wet. So in this process we're going to go through today, I'm going to show you how if the reed is too sharp or flat what you would do, or if it's too um, loud or soft what you do, and those things all interconnect with each other. So I think the reed is a little bit loud and it's a little bit sharp. So what I'm going to try to do is um, shave on it a little bit more. You can see also that it's a little bit uneven. The tip is a little bit uneven. And um, we're going to just even that out a little bit. It's one of the most important parts of reed making is to make both sides, both sides of the reed from left to right and from down to up an even scrape. And then the same thing on the other side when you turn it over. And it's a good idea to get it wet. It doesn't have to soak. Eventually this reed is going to be what we call a dry reed, which means once you get it working in your crumb horn, you won't have to take it out and soak it every time, and it should just work every time you pick it up without any adjustments. That can take a few days to happen because as you, you make the reed and it's forming its new shape, it kind of has, I think we talked about this before, a little bit of a memory of where it's been. And, and we have to teach it where it, we want it to go as far as its shape and holding together and that kind of thing. So over the course of a few days, you may find you get it perfectly adjusted one day, come back to it the next day and it's not quite right. Um, what often happens is that the reed plays a little bit harder we call that stiffening up. Uh, the cane seems to just get a little harder, even though you've taken all this cane off of it. We don't really know why that happens, but so this is a, a couple of day project. Once you get the thing playing right, and you're really at the mercy of the particular piece of cane. It's kind of like wood. Wood, each piece of wood is a little bit different from the next, and it's the same thing with reed cane. The grain in it you, that you can see, it's not going to be exactly the same from one piece to the next. So, the softer the reed, the more you can manipulate the aperture and get it to do what you want it to do. It's always a good idea when you get to a certain point to, to blow on it to make sure it's you haven't gone too far. If it gets really soft, you, can, you might have to cut it off. So there are things to do if the reed is flat, if, if the pitch of your instrument is flat when you put it in the instrument, you can squeeze the aperture closed with, with your thumb and Actually, you can do it pretty easily without the pliers. Kind of squeeze it, get it to... You know, go where you want it. Try it again. <clears throat> now that plays pretty good. It's not as loud and it's not as hard to blow. Let's see what the pitch turned out to be. 
That's only about 10 cents sharp. So what that tells me, it tells me two things. Um, the, the reed is a little bit wet. As the reed dries, it's gonna be a little bit um, sharper yet. So the reed is wet and sharp, so I need to shave on it a little bit more so that when we let it dry out, it'll end up being where we want it. So let me just take some more off. The aperture is about right. Kind of got lucky with this one. You'll probably spend most of your time evening out the reed and just trying to make it the same from left to right and up to down. Keeping in mind that you're just a slightly thicker in the middle. So, in fact, I could draw a little picture here. It's kind of like a bassoon reed in that um, the middle is a little bit thicker and the sides are a little bit thinner and the tip is a little bit thinner. So you want that same look over on this side. And you can even draw that on there and just leave this part till last so that you, and you can kind of see when you put the plaque back in and you look at the sides of the blades, how thick they are on each side and you want them to be the same thickness from side to side. Let me think here. A little more off of here. Maybe do an overall scrape. And as you scrape on it, it also dries out a little bit. So eventually what you want to do is kind of wean yourself off of the water when you get it to a certain point where it's pretty much playing in the instrument like we have it now. I'm gonna just do an overall scrape. It's drying out as we go. And let's see if I got the tip any closer. I don't know if you can see that tip. Um, this side over here is just a little bit. So let me See if I can. It's also a very good idea to not do all of this at, a, at once. You can make the whole reed in a day, but you probably want to do the finishing of it over the course of a few days so that you let it rest. It's good to kind of let it rest. And um, so if you test it out several days in a row, that's kind of a good idea. Pick it up every day and play it in the morning and say, well, I think it could be a little easier or it's too hard to blow or it's too closed. Sometimes they close up, the aperture closes up. Sometimes the aperture opens up. That looks a lot better. More even. Let's see what that does in the instrument. Sometimes they look really good and they surprise you and they don't sound really good. That's feeling like a really nice read. And it's right on pitch. So what I would do is I would leave this and come back to it in a couple of days or like the next day or 12 hours later, let it be nice and dry. You can leave it in the instrument. That's probably the safest place for it. And when you take the cap off, just be really careful and slow, straight off, and then straight back on. So you can leave it in its, in its um, cap, put it away, and come back to it the next day. Okay, so the read is done, and I hope you've enjoyed this series of videos.